All right, guys, welcome back. It's your boy, Bishop Shadow. I finally came back to do another video. I know it's been <laughs> literally a year since the last time I did one. I really was trying to just stay out of this. Not really this particular topic, just kind of stay out of doing what I was doing because it was taking a lot of my time. And, you know, I had to focus on um, real stuff, real life things. You know, I don't know about everybody else. But um, that's what this video is going to be about. We're going to be talking about everybody else. And as you saw with the title, it's, we're going to be talking about esports, black people, and you. To be perfectly honest, it's going to mean a lot of things, especially regarding the esports and especially regarding you. It's not going to be you as the individual. It's going to be more like you from YouTube. And there's another thing I want to talk about is the word community. And I think that's going to be our focal point for right now. And yes, I'm going to be doing a little bit of, <clears throat> excuse me, jumping around on topics, so bear with me. Now, the first thing I want to talk about, like I said, was community. I want to ask everybody a, a rhetorical question. What is a community? What is it? I don't give you my definition, my, my layman terms definition of a community. A community is a group of people. Not a small group of people, but a, a large group of people, and it can be any type of foundation of people that come together for a common goal, and they're supposed to look out for each other, and it doesn't have to necessarily mean who I live across from. So this is what I also want to talk about after you, you think about what I just said. Have we been a community? Have we really looked out for each other? Have we really expanded our horizons on our way of thinking and who we communicate with and how we communicate? Do we, are we trying to strive for the same goal? I'm going to give you the obvious answer. Hell no. Nah. Everybody been rolling for self. Everybody in this so-called community that we're referring to. And that's the fighting game community. It's not a community. From now on, I'm not calling y'all a community, period. I'm not doing it anymore. Fuck the FGC, fuck the acronym, fuck all of it. You're not a community. You're a neighborhood. And basically, a neighborhood could be anything. It could be a barrio. It could be a ghetto. It could be a suburb. Like what I just said, think of what I'm going with. Where I'm going in that direction. Separatism. Everything's separate. When you think of neighborhood watch... It's really all the people that's on that street. We're going to look out for people that's on that street. Fuck our neighbors behind us. I don't know them. That's not how communities interact with each other. That's not a community. And that's a neighborhood. And if you want to act like a hood, be a hood, but do it on your own time. Don't bring that bullshit to me and don't bring it to anybody else who does not condone that type of shit. I don't condone it. I condemn it. I don't stand for any of that crap. A lot of the stuff that I've been seeing for the past couple of years, you've already seen what I've done with other videos. If you haven't, stop bullshitting and go watch it. I don't need the clicks, but I need you to watch it because you're missing out on stuff. I'm not getting paid for this shit, and we're going to be talking about that later. But this is what I want everybody to understand. We are supposed to be separated to a very, very small level. When it comes to certain stuff. And main event touch basis on this. And this is kind of the, the initial reason why I wanted to do this video. What sparked it was he was very offended by a t-shirt that was worn during Evo. The stupid part is it didn't shock me. It wasn't one of those situations where you look at him like, damn, I don't know how to feel about this one. It didn't do that to me. I just looked at it and was just like and went on to the next thing. Because that's unfortunately typical of this group, this hood, this neighborhood of people. This ain't no fucking community. Because if it was a fucking community, they wouldn't allow that shit. They would have took his ass and said, hey man, turn that shit inside out. They would have took it to the level that motherfuckers would do at your job. You think you have the balls to wear a, a motherfucking t-shirt like that at your job? Matter of fact, most of the people that I'm talking to right now, their job is there. There is no casual. There's some people that the only time they can wear jeans is Friday. There's groups of people that I'm talking to. They have to bid <laughs> to get a fucking casual day. 
And there's other people, the only way they can have a casual day is when they're on vacation and when they're not at work. So stop it. A lot of these people who are doing this shit, they think this is a job, but they're not professional. They've never been professional. They've never done anything professional in their life. We're talking about the early 19, 18, 19 year olds to mid 20, uh, 20 year olds, the, the immature group people. You're, and you're hearing a lot of ridicule coming from the guys that's in their early 30s, late 30s. You know why? It's because we finally grew the fuck up. Just because we play video games doesn't mean we're not adults. I can't speak for everyone, but I'm most definitely an adult, man. I've been an adult. I've been an adult since my mom passed. I had no choice in my matter. So I had to go from that point on till now, having to take care of me and mine. You know what I'm saying? Not necessarily rolling for self, but making sure I took care of myself. So when it was time to take care of somebody else, I could do it. Because that's what part of being a man is. It's not about having kids early. It's about going to work and doing a whole bunch of shit you don't want to do. And a lot of these these so-called gamers, I'm calling y'all boys. You're a bunch of boys. Little insecure boys. You have no right to act the way that you act. Just because you got a few motherfucking hairs on your nuts, you think you big shit now. You haven't done anything hard in your life. You haven't done any grunt work. You ain't did no warehouse, none of that shit. You ain't dig no trenches. You ain't did nothing manly in your entire life other than fart and burp. That's not manly. That's just a, a guy being a fucking guy. And that's what you guys are doing right now. But your guys doing boy shit. Sitting here, the other stuff that I, that was brought to my attention, um, I'm kind of glad I, I waited on this video because it, it gave me more to it gave me more to talk about. The stuff that Chris G said, and I don't keep this brief. The only thing I gotta say about that is it goes to show you how stupid this motherfucker is. Let's break it down. You're Hispanic. Who plays Japanese video games? Primarily, every fucking fighting game has came from Japan. Even though we can still say Street Fighter is American. But Capcom as a whole is still Eastern. Let's look at it like that. But let's also break it down a little bit further. It's not just Japanese video games. It's Japanese culture. What do we know of not only just Japanese culture, Asian culture? What is the one thing you've ever noticed about Asians? Feudal times. Let's go back. Let's just go back. Keep going back. Keep going back. Keep going back. What do you know that Asians do primarily when it comes to disgrace and dishonor? What's one of the first things they fucking do? These motherfuckers kill themselves. And they hope somebody cuts their head off so it can, it can go faster. That's what they do. And it was more and honor to kill yourself than it was anything else. I will assist you. Now, we live in a culture... Where we feel that's a cop-out. I'm not going to lie to you. Sometimes I feel that is a cop-out. When somebody wants to go that way. But I'm going to speak to you from personal experience. I've been there. I've been there. And when I was looking at main event talk. I was looking him dead in the eye. And I could see he's been there too. We've all been there. It's rough. The shit that he was going through not too long ago. Been there did that. And I'm not talking shit. I'm just telling you, I'm talking real shit. This is what's really going on. And here this, this, this scumbag want to sit here and talk shit about somebody who actually had the balls to do it. It takes a lot of motherfucking guts to do something like that. It takes a lot of guts. If you really love life, you should be scared of death. If you really don't love life, one of the things that's on your mind is, I ain't scared to die. And one thing that I've noticed, a lot of people would rather go on their own terms than have something just take their life away. Like when it was just finding out the guy had Parkinson's. Now, I actually didn't want to bring this up, but I'm going to bring it up anyway. In my family, I have one group of individuals. They're like second, they're, they are second cousins. And if I know a lot of people haven't heard about this, but if you research this if you google this right now uh google tuskegee syphilis look that up after you're done looking that up look up the movie 
that's connected to the, that that phrase because you're going to see it on Google. There should be a movie talking about it, and you should see um, the guy that played Morpheus in this movie. That's real shit. That's stuff that actually happened. Not only did it happen in the 30s, it's still happening now in the 21st century. It's still affecting family. And it's affecting mine. I just lost two of my cousins in less than a year to this, this disease. Which is basically syphilis. And everybody's like, well, syphilis is curable. Until it's passed on to your offspring. Because then it mutates. And if you keep, and that person has another kid, it keeps, it keeps mutating. Now it's, it's genetic. Now it's become a completely separate thing. It's not even syphilis anymore. It's something else. And that was the whole point of that disease research that was coming from the government, which was actually some research they took from the damn Nazis. The Nazis was doing that shit first. They were trying to kill Jews with this. Now we got American, white people trying to kill Negroes with this. That was the whole purpose. And if, that, if they found the way to get that shit to really do what they, what they were planning, a lot of us wouldn't be here, and I probably wouldn't be here either. But like I said, my family is originally from Alabama. And one of my family uh, relatives went and did that shit. Didn't know what he was getting into. Got infected with syphilis. Had sex with his wife. And lo and behold, he was actually also on top of that, messing with another chick. Got it, gave them both syphilis. They both got pregnant, and now they both of their kids got this damn disease. Then it's been passing down. Some people decided not to have kids. Other people just, it just happened. Life. Life happens. And I just lost two of my favorite cousins that were the same age as me. And they couldn't, they couldn't tell anyone when they could die. And you got to understand, these dudes died at the age of 32 and 33. That's bullshit. They avoided gangs. They avoided harsh drugs. I mean, I can't, they didn't avoid no weed, let's be real. But they avoided that harsh shit. They could have died so many other times, but they died by an incurable disease that they already knew about. They knew they had this shit since they were children. You know why? Because their mom died when they were four. Of the same shit. And they got a little sister. She's the only one left. And she's next. And it ain't shit we can do about it. There's no marches for this disease. There's no ribbons for this disease. And I've already... And what hurt me the most is when I'm hearing this girl... Telling me how bad she wanted to die... Right that second. Because she's like, I already know I'm going to die anyway. What's the point? I want to be with my family. I'm by myself. My individual family is gone. I've lost my brothers. I lost my mother. And here's the crazy part. She's a mother too. So you mean to tell me it's okay to say shit like that when there's so many other people that's, that's suffering from shit. And they, they feel like they they shouldn't live on. And we're kind of sitting there trying to tell them, hey, you know, live your life. Live the best way you can. And I'm talking to my cousin, one of my cousin's kids. He's 14. He's about to be a starting quarterback, black quarterback at, a, uh, at the school that I just graduated from 15 years ago. And he knows in the back of his mind he only has 16 years to live. The only thing I could say to him was, Keep living your life like normal. Enjoy it while you can. Don't keep don't let this shit stop you from doing what you're doing. Because some people are stronger than others. This man this little boy that's about to become a man, he's already prepared for it. Just like his father. Just like his uncle. And he loved his uncle. He loved his father. But he lost both of them. In, in less than a year. He lost one in September of last year. He just lost the other one in July. Of this year. And you want to count out and say stupid shit like that. That goes to show you what kind of person that is. And that goes to show you. for There's a lot of other people. It ain't just him. I got friends on Facebook. 
This dude came, he got to the point where he said, killing yourself is lower than being a motherfucking pedophile. I didn't know what to say after that. I didn't. I, I really didn't. The only thing I could say to myself is that's how he feels about the sub subject. And I'm going to leave him alone. I'm not even going to talk to this dude no more until I find a reason to want to talk to him again. Because that's crazy. And anybody that supports that shit, you're just as crazy. And that's what I've been finding out about this whole so-called community. That's how you guys have been thinking. Some, sometimes people just want to be the opposite just to be the opposite. And they're doing it in the wrong, for the wrong, all the wrong reasons. Why the fuck you... It's like, there's a reason why people agree on certain topics. And why it's an overwhelming amount. It's not because of morality. It's not even because of religion. It just makes sense. The problem is, like the main event said, we're losing a lot of common sense. A lot of you guys don't have it. Don't know what it is. It was never entrusted to you. I don't know whose fault that was. Maybe it was your mom. Maybe it was your dad. I don't know. But you do not have common sense at all in any way, shape, or form. And it's disgusting. Which brings up esports, another disgusting topic. This is not a fucking sport. It's not. Because how many times... Oh, well, let's put it like this, okay? There has been motherfuckers in the NBA, NFL, other sports where they gambled on the games. Didn't not too, just too long ago a referee got reprimanded for doing shit like that? You know why? Because you're not supposed to do shit like that. Because this is supposed to be a sport that is determined by the players not the referees how would you feel that somebody was just walking around in your life and every time you wanted to make money they would blow a whistle and say you can't do that and you're like oh that's bullshit you taking money out my my kid's mouth I don't care I'm making money today cuz the bet was you was gonna take a left at this turn and I didn't want you to take a left I wanted you to take a right because that was the odds and if you go right, guess what? I make tons of money off of your stupid ass. Because I don't give a fuck about your life. It's about me. That's what esports is. It's not about you. It's about me. Fuck you. I gotta make this money. Fuck you. I wanna sit on my ass and do nothing and make money. Fuck you. I wanna go on Twitter and complain when I, when I didn't win a championship. Fuck you. That's what the community is. And that's not a community in my opinion. That's an individual that we need to get a neighborhood watch on and say, keep that motherfucker out. I don't want this dude around. I don't want to see his face until he cleans up his motherfucking act. And if he don't, you know what? Fuck you. Because over here, we're going to do shit civilized. We're going to do shit the right way. Or at least try. Because if we didn't get it right the first time, guess what? We learned from that mistake and we, we tied those motherfucking knots tighter this time. Because the problem is, is, is the sponsorships. That's another problem. The egos. That's another problem. And the culture. That's another problem. The biggest problem is the culture. There is no culture. Which brings up my topic of being, uh, you know, of black people. Black people. Do we have a culture? And before you answer that question, think long and hard before you answer that question. Do black people have a culture? If the first thing popped in your head was sports, music, and entertainment, you're way off base. That's not a culture. It's not a culture. It's not. Every, everybody dances. Native Americans, what do they do? They have this thing called a powwow. What do uh, Germans do? When it comes to Oktoberfest. Okay? Stuff like that when it's organized. That's a culture. But when you're just dancing over just stupid shit, jigging and, and doing retarded crap, that's not, that's not a fucking culture, man. You're doing some individual shit. Individual shit is not a culture. That's just what you do. And you think everybody should do the same. Because you're the one doing it. No, motherfucker. It's not going down like that. Selling drugs is not a culture. Being a drug dealer is not a culture. Being a rapper is not a culture. 
being a singer is not a culture. What that was supposed to be, when it came to being a musician, being some uh, athlete, that was to get yourself out of the situation that you're in. How many black people are playing Street Fighter to get out of the hood? Nobody. I ain't never heard, excuse my language, I ain't never heard a nigga say, I gotta play, I gotta pick Ryu today, because if I don't, I don't get shot in the head when I get home. Because I live in a fucked up neighborhood, and I'm trying to get out of the hood. Ain't a nigga alive ever said no shit like that. Never. But I've heard many people say, I gotta keep playing this, this I gotta keep getting better at this sport, because if I don't, I won't get that scholarship. Because I've lived most of my life going to schools that didn't educate me. I had in, in, inadequate teaching. I didn't have books. I'm sitting here living in the, 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 uh, the times where we don't even use books anymore. But my school can't afford to give me an iPad because one of the first things in the back of my mind is, I ain't giving this little nigga an iPad. He gonna steal it. He gonna pawn that shit. That's what people think about our culture. They think that's the only thing we can do. Play sports, entertain white people, and steal. They, that's what they all think about black people. That's not black people. That's why I said nigga and didn't censor myself. Because black people know good and well that's what that is. That's being, a, you know, doing the wrong thing is really about being a nigga. There's no positivity in that word anymore. We passed the NWA phrase. The, that, 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 that stuff is over. We still going to be dealing with these cops. The shit that's going in uh, Ferguson, that ain't new. That's not new. That shit's been happening in places where there's barely any black people. I'm from Omaha, Nebraska. Does black people jump out at you when you hear that city? I've been at work. And I've talked to middle-aged white people, and they ask me where I'm at. I'm like, oh, I'm in Omaha, Nebraska. Oh, that's a wonderful city. You know why? Because they've never been to North Omaha. They've been to downtown Omaha and West Omaha. They ain't been nowhere else. Because the people that's in Omaha, they tell them, don't go north, don't go south, just go east and west. Stay on Dodge. You can't Dodge Dodge. As soon as you get off Dodge, you're going to get in trouble. Because if you find yourself going too far north, you start seeing too many black people, you went too far north. If you go too far south, you start seeing Mexican people, yeah, you went too far. So we can't tell you, if, uh, you know, we can't protect you when you get that far. Stay your ass on this path, stay up and down Dodge, you'll be A-OK. -okay. Keep in mind, there's a lot of black people in, in Omaha. If you were to Google um, North, uh, north Omaha... Or KETV. There's never a night anybody's not been shot. Matter of fact, today, I just, I don't even live in North Omaha anymore. I just saw somebody get shot in my old neighborhood. Then I grew up from the time I was five to the time I was uh, 18. When I was growing up in those days, nobody got shot on that neighborhood. And we didn't even live that far away from a notorious gang, which was 40 or 5. 40 or 5 Crips. Didn't live that fucking far away from that shit. If I wanted to go to... My, if I was, when I, Back when I was a little kid and I wanted to walk from Monroe Middle School back to my crib, I had to go through 40 or 5. I wasn't worried about gang members back then. I was worried about stupid, ignorant niggas with their dogs not being chained up. Because that's the other problem that we have. For some reason, everybody want bulldogs. Motherfucking pit, excuse me, pit bulls and rock rylers, and then don't want, then don't treat the dog like the animal should be treated. The animal grows up and becomes an adult, and he just think everything needs to be bit and needs to be barked at, and is violent. And then, the, and then the motherfuckers looking like I didn't know he could do that. You knew he could do that. That's what you've been wanting him to do. Some of them motherfuckers think shit is funny when you get chased by a dog. They thought that shit was funny back in the day. Till motherfuckers started getting shot over it. Then it stopped. Then the police got involved. Then now, you, you legally can't even walk a pit bull out in the street without a muzzle. That's how bad it's gotten. But guess what? 
black people aren't the only ones with pit bulls now. White people do too. And they don't follow the rules. They think only black people do that. No, guess what? A little white girl got bit in the face. I wonder why. Another little girl almost got killed by a pit bull. I wonder why. It's not the animal, it's the people. But everybody only want to focus on one individual group. That's stupid. But I'm going to go to what actually are some differences. What I was trying to say to, to main event. I only had one point. Only one point. You might not like it when you hear people say like they're like with me. You know, I have my little T-shirts. I've had that going on since 2008. I'm not even really going to talk about that too much. But I'm going to say there is a difference how black people play video games, how white people play video games, how Asians play video games. And to be perfectly honest, the only, the only reason why our cultures are very vastly different is because in America, Americans created video games, but they didn't revolutionize it. Asians did. Atari didn't have revolutionized anything. All it did was it was the kickstart of the generation but Nintendo is the one who just said we can do this shit too not only that we can do it better because guess what most of us have been making video games on PCs before Nintendo even came out they've been trying to make video games for the longest and you if you were to talk to some of these uh, Japanese uh, video game designers that have been in the game for 30 40 plus years they don't even really talk about the Nintendo. They don't even really talk about the Sega Genesis. They talk about systems we ain't never even heard of. They talk about video games we ain't even heard of. Because we don't get that shit. I mean, a lot of us, you know, everybody's like, man, well, who was the first? Man, Resident Evil was the first survival horror. No, it wasn't. It took a journalist to school us on that shit. And the, and the funny thing was, I was like, you know what? I heard of that game. I was like, I do remember that game. I was in. The, I was reading an EGM book back in the day, and it was talking about this game, and it was called Sweet Home. And I was like, I when I was just reading the premise of it, it didn't entertain me. But there was, I think it was an article. I don't remember the article. Don't quote me. But I think it was. It was talking about video games you won't get, that won't come overseas, and Sweet Home was one of them. And it was all because of one scene. And if you see that, if you go look on YouTube, it's on there. Some, some some guy has a speed, he has a speed run of it. Unfortunately, it does have commentation on it. But he shows you it. And when you see it, you'll be like, that wasn't shit. That wasn't shit. Why the fuck they think? Hey, it was the 80s. Now, after you've seen that, look up the movie. And look up that same scene. And tell me what was the difference. What was worse? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So that's the other thing. That's where our cultural difference are. There is a difference. There is a difference. Let's stop. Let's step right there. How many black people grew up with a Neo Geo? Exactly. How many white people grew up with a Neo Geo? Exactly. How many Japanese guys grew up with a Neo Geo? Exactly. There is a difference. Because they've been exposed to more things. Now, I, we can even simplify it even more. I don't know if Main Event can, ca can catch up with this or not. But let's look at Yipes as a player of Marvel vs. Capcom 2. And then look at your average everyday dude that just started playing Marvel vs. Capcom 2 in 2010. And he's Japanese. Is the Japanese dude going to be better than Yipes? More than likely he's not. It's, it's because of cultural difference. For one, the only thing Japanese about this game is the Capcom side. Marvel is not... They're just now being exposed to this shit. Japan doesn't know anything about Marvel until the early parts of 2000. You know, the Marvel superheroes, uh, Children of the Atom, games like that that Capcom was making is what kind of force-fed Japanese players into whose culture? Our culture. They have manga, we have comic books. Same fucking thing. Only difference is cultural difference. They're going to talk about what Japanese people want to talk about. And their creativity is different. So if you see all these vast differences, 
is going to affect gameplay as well. And that's what I'm talking about. Gameplay. A black gamer is going to do shit that a white gamer is not going to do. Based off of cultural differences. We can even downgrade it to the point that there's white people who play certain games that black people wouldn't. And vice versa. And then there's Japanese people or Korean people or Chinese people that play certain games that no American would play. The only major factor is it's not being shipped to us. Nor is it being catered to us. Guess what? Black people play Monster Hunter. White people play Monster Hunter. But who is it catered to? Exactly. So that's, that was my point. So we can, it's nothing wrong with a black person taking pride in how they play video games. Because we do, on a cultural level, do things differently. And we used to play, you know, have jokes about how, how it, why is it that when a black person, the first time a black person plays uh, Guilty Gear, they always pick Chip. <laughs> yeah, we used to, and, and you guess who was making that joke? Another black guy. Who plays Guilty Gear? Because they, they try to expose it to their friends. And that's exactly who they pick. Every single time. Guess what? I did the same thing. When I, play, when I finally bought Guilty Gear X, who did I pick first? Chip. And I'm one of those dudes that read the book first. Before I play the game. So when I open it up, I'm looking at the book. I'm looking at the characters. Yeah, so he's like the Ryu of the game. Uh, this dude's wearing blue. He's got to be the kin of the game. Whatever. Who's this dude? Oh, that blade is kind of tight. And he's a ninja? Well, I like ninjas. I really like ninjas. <laughs> it's like, you've already won me over because I really like ninjas. So, yeah. That's, once again, another cultural difference. We are different. And we should embrace those differences. To not do that is idiotic. That's as far as I'm going to go with that. Now we're going to go to the YouTube. You. You listening to this or not half ass listening to it because most of the guys that I've seen and listen to my videos, they only hear one thing and then they just go on a tangent about that and I never hear from them again. Unless it's my DMC videos, which I still don't understand why people keep they keep coming to those videos. As if that's, I did that shit yesterday. I was like, do you realize in January that shit will be three years old? That's how old that shit is. My videos are older than the actual game. Get the fuck out of here with that. Seriously. I had other videos. You could be watching that. More informative, educational shit. But that's the problem. You don't like to be educated on things. You think you know everything. You don't. That's one thing I've learned about myself within the last couple of weeks, especially starting a new job. I just got into a training class that that wanted to go a different style because of through because you know how if you've been studying companies and you've been watching main event he's been talking about shit like this people look at you know, when people look at what other people do versus businesses look at stats they look at statistics and this business was trying to look at it as okay it looks like it's a high successful rate for people to go at a, a self-paced education. When in reality there's no such thing. The pace is. You're going to still learn this shit. But we're still going to move you forward. That's the pace. We're still moving you forward. But you better pick up on some shit. Because in reality. We ain't teaching you a fucking thing. You're going to learn it yourself. So if you're not a good teacher yourself. You don't know how to teach your shit to yourself anything. Guess what? You're going to miss a lot of shit. And if you're not used to this style of teaching, guess what? You're going to you're going to miss out on a lot more shit. So that's as far as I'm going to go with my own personal life on that. But that's that's a topic that's affecting not just me, it's affecting you too. Because that's what businesses are doing. They're looking at your stats. They're not looking at you. They're looking at your stats, just like YouTube is doing. They're looking at your stats. How long did you watch this video? Why did you watch this video? Where did you come from? And matter of fact, they can see even more about you. They can see your IP address. They can see where you just came from. The last video you watched three days ago. 
And then every time you go to the YouTube front page, oh, here's some suggestions. Because we want you to watch more shit. Because on these videos, we put ads on them. So you can watch this shit, and we get paid for it. And everybody's happy. Are you happy? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. But guess what? You don't give a fuck. As long as you're still getting to see what you want to see. You know, I'm seeing a lot of people that's, you know, has been brought to my attention. A lot of people have been on YouTube crying. They've been on, they go on Twitter. They go on Facebook. They act like their life is about to go to, uh, come to an end. And then I find out that these are men doing this. And men are becoming attention whores. What the fuck? There's nothing manly about being a attention whore. There's nothing manly about that. Nothing. If you're going on Facebook and you're telling everybody your problems, you better be telling that to people because you know that you're your friends and they're giving you advice about real shit. Not about Twitter. Not about YouTube. Not about Twitch. Real life situations. I hope that's what it's about. Because I know a lot of people on my Facebook that complain about their job all the time. The only thing I can tell them is what the next guy would probably say. Find another job. But before you leave this job, make sure you got that job. That new one. Make sure you have it. Because if you don't, you're fucking yourself. And you already live in a state where it's pretty easy to get fucked over. You, you remember, because one of the first things they say, they say these two sentences. We're an equal opportunity employer and we are uh, backed by the uh, at will law. So what that means is we can hire anybody and we can fire anybody. Yeah. Take that with you. You can eat that. <laughs> you can eat that. And most people can't digest it. They don't get it. They just, oh, I need to go to work. And that's it. And one, the first thing come out their mouth when they lose, man, this is fucked up. Why did I lose my job? You didn't pay attention. Just like people aren't paying attention to the community. We've been talking about these video games. What the, the practices. Talking to them all about this stuff. Exposing people on things. I, I'm a little disappointed about what's going on. It's not the producer's fault for what's going on with the evil within. I'm, I'm here. I, I was the one who told a lot of people on Twitter the bad news about a season pass being put on the evil within which what makes me scratch my head even more because that game was supposed to come out this month and it got pushed back and then i'm like wait a minute they just told us the reason why this game got pushed back was because they, they felt that they wanted to polish it up some more and we were sitting there like that's cool because i don't want a, a shitty game like watchdogs so if you pretty much make sure you get your shit straight before you put out this game that's going to need a day one patch or it's fucking up on a PC or whatever system that it's on, that's great. That's honorable. Do what you do. But make sure you keep your end of the bargain. Because I'm still going to pre-order this. I'm still going to get it just as long as you make sure you get this product out and you do it right. Okay? Okay. Guess what? Mm, we were really just polishing up our... Extra shit because that's what our publisher wanted us to do. And then you're going to tell me that 15 hours of gameplay for a survival horror game? And you're, from what it sounds like, you're, I don't know. I don't even want to go too deep into it. The only thing, it, it just, I was like, wait a minute. 15 hours? Are you serious? And then they said, based on game mode and, 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 um, Whatever. I'm just going to leave it at that. This is what I'm talking about. And there's still people buying Ultra Street Fighter 4. But guess what? I'm not buying that shit. I bought it once. And I should have never bought it that time. Matter of fact, I only played the game. I only beat the game with, with Guy and Ryu. And then I got bored with it. Never played it again. Took it to motherfucking GameStop and said, here you go. And, you know what I'm saying? I, I got trade-in credit to get Catherine. That's the funny part. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, fuck that shit. So here we are. We're esports, black people, and you. What do you think? You really think we should be um, celebrating this this new terminology for your your uh, recreation? Do you really think that people should respect you for what you do when it's not a job? 
It's not even a career. It's a hobby. And you know it's a hobby, but you don't want to listen. And then we got all these cultural differences with not just black people, but all people. But everybody still tags it on us, you know, uh, that stigma on us, but no one else. When in reality, a lot more people are a lot more fucked up and doing a lot more fucked up things. And then when we try to stand up, we cause more problems than we solve. And that's not progress. I don't want to see that shit in, 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 when it comes to this, just being a gamer. Fuck the community. This is about being me as a gamer and other people as gamers. I don't want to see shit like that. We should be coming together doing the right thing because I, I find it funny that we can't do that when it's important, but we do that when it's not. And usually the people who really come together is over stupid shit. Hey, I, I like uh, I like 3D fighters, but I like anime. And then there's a big fucking war over that. That's stupid. And you know it's stupid. And then you try to justify it. And that's why I started to say <clears throat> brain damage. Bill Cosby said it, the, said it best. Brain damage. And we've already done reports or seen reports on this shit. Video games don't cause brain damage. So it has to be something else. So it's like something has ha had to happen in your life to make you this idiotic. I, I won't put it all in your parents, but to be perfectly honest, parenting is 90% of all fault when it, when it comes to a child. 90%. The other 10% is on that child. Because guess what? That's a child. The parent is supposed to be teaching the child what to do, and the child is supposed to take that information and do what they will. But if they're not if they're not digesting that information, they're going to become an adult that makes other little kids that act just like them. And it's going to be a continuously ugly ass cycle, just like Tuskegee syphilis, an incurable disease that nobody is trying to get any type of research on. And only one president talked about it. And it was after almost 70 years, 60, 70 years after it happened. Been trying to, uh, uh, presidents before him been trying to cover that up for the longest. And it took this one guy to even speak on it. And that was it. And we, and to be perfectly honest, a lot of people don't even, they ain't even heard about the shit. But they heard about what happened to Robin Williams. And they heard about what Chris G had to say about it. And then on top of that, they had a the nerve to back it up. And said, man, I, I, I respect him for that. I don't cheer for him, man. Shut the fuck up. You are that disease that everybody wants to get rid of. And the thing is, it is curable. It's curable. And it's not by getting rid of you. It's, point, it's pulling you to the corner and say, hey, man, I need to talk to you. I'm not feeling this. And not only am I not feeling this, we all are feeling it. Your behavior is out of control. You saying shit on Twitter that has no business being said. And you're bringing too much negative attention to what we're trying to do and try to keep positive. And just like I said, I'm glad Vince doing it. I'm, I'm, I'm pissed that I can't because this is the only time I have to myself. And I'm doing this video. This is the only time I have. But I got, you know, in a, in a day or so, I got to go right back to fucking work. And I'm busy from that point on. When when main event sees my messages, that's my only time that I have time to myself to just say, hey, here, I, I, I am I am staying up with shit. I am watching you. But I can't really speak on it because I got other shit to do. But I, I can't sit back and continue to let this shit happen. I've been talking about it before. I'm going to talk about it again. And if I got to keep doing it again, I'm going to keep talking about it. Till I'm fucking blue in the face and somebody finally listens. Stop catering to yourself and start thinking on a larger scale. Because all of this shit is bigger than you. It really is. Your life is bigger than you. Because if you are a man and you have children, I don't care how you acquired those children and your lifestyle. We ain't talking about that. I'm talking about the fact of responsibility. Responsibility is in you. 
you are responsible for everything that coincides with that. Nobody's responsible of you, for you other than your parents. You're at that age, that shit's over with. A lot of you guys, they're done. I'm dealing with a kid right now in my class. He, qu <laughs> he quit his job because he just doesn't want to work. He has, a, he has the education where most kids that I grew up with, including myself, had no opportunities to obtain. That level of education. And he throwing it all away because he don't want to do shit. And that's, and, and that's what I'm saying. A lot of you guys are just like Congress. Y'all don't want to do shit, but y'all still want to get paid. Fuck you. Seriously, I have no respect for you. If you don't want to do shit and you still want to make money, fuck you. Because that's not how it works. That's not how it's never worked like that. Ever. And if we could, if we go back in time, we already got it easy. There's motherfuckers right now that pull ideas out their ass and they make money because they took the effort to do it and apply it and research it and then go and go to motherfuckers like Shark Tank and say, hey, this is my idea. And just like this video. I'm getting tired of you motherfuckers doing this shit. I'm 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 really wish you motherfuckers will come to a conclusion and to a realization that you need to change your ways. But until then, I'm out.